Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles of VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're here today to work on this Super Beetle Volks rod. And this thing, as you saw in the previous video, the wiring is an absolute disaster. And I offended a few people in the last video where I had said that Ford and Chevy guys are probably the ones that did the wiring to it. And uh, I left the Mopar guys out. Well, actually, I didn't. The Mopar guys just didn't make the cut. I had to cut out a few segments that didn't make sense to the video. And I mentioned the Mopar guys in there. So you guys don't get off scot-free. No, 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 no. But I did offend one person, uh, Little Red's Garage. He said I shouldn't make fun of Ford and Chevy guys so much and that uh, he's going to unsubscribe. I was, like, taken back. I was like, seriously, I offended for something like that? I mean, it was obviously a joke. I was being facetious. Although, the joke is based on history, and of what I've noticed, it's always the Ford, Chevy guys, and Mopar guys are always telling me that their cars don't work this way, and I'm doing the Volkswagen wrong. <laughs> Well, anyway, we worked out the disagreement, and I explained that it was just a joke, and I was just trying to have a little fun, and everybody else in the comments seemed to understand, although a few people did say, hey, don't make fun of the Chevy guys. I was like, what does that mean? The Ford guys are fair game? <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, if you're not a Volkswagen guy, you're not a Volkswagen guy, and if you never had a Volkswagen, you never worked on a Volkswagen, you don't understand the idiosyncrasies of a Volkswagen, you're not going to get it. You're just not. And... That's one of the reasons why so many things on these cars are always just wrong when you get them. Anyways, we're going to jump into this thing with both feet. Uh, I'm going to tear that wiring harness apart because everybody's telling me you can't fix that or it'll take too long to fix it when I think, in fact, I can repair it faster then I can actually reinstall a brand new harness and for a lot less money. So we're going to attempt that today. Let's see what I find. Don't forget to licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Plug the dingle blades to get updates every time I video. Check out Duck... Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks, everybody, for watching. All right, I sat down in here and I decided to try this one more time. And obviously something is happening. When I messed around on the back side of the dash here, there's a whole bunch of wires that are just all matching colors that the previous owner had done to this. And uh, they are twisted together in a bundle and not very well twisted. They probably need to be soldered or maybe a wire nut put on their junction block or something, anything better than what they've got. And all I did was touch it and suddenly things are starting to work again, which is really weird. <laughs> but no fire, of course. We're gonna have to put some gas in it. There's no gas in this thing whatsoever. Back side of the dash here, this is where those switches are at. You see these wires here that are all bundled together. Um, that's not factory, very clearly not factory. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that previous owner was thinking, but that is the little mess there that I was just twisting the wires together. Um, because, well, they already are together. Again, I can't do any more damage than what's already here. So, I made that bundle work. This is not attached to anything. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to go to. Maybe nothing, maybe it's supposed to go over to the gauges. Uh, we got another loose wire, which is, well, it's, it's part of that bundle. Again, I don't know what the hell that goes to. So. We got some stuff to sort out on this, and uh, <laughs> before I even attempt to try to run it or, or get this thing driving, um, uh, yeah, I got a lot of things I'm going to play with. I'm going to try to rip out a lot of these extra wires and try to hook up the factory harness. Um, it doesn't look like it's cut in any way. Anything that looks like it's just added to it. So I'm going to see what I can do about poking around and getting the thing fixed. So uh, let's see what we got. If we're going to use those switches on the dashboard, I'll just connect them to the stock harness and put everything back the way it belongs so it's properly fuse protected because none of this stuff is. And I mean zero. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Wires just running everywhere. I don't know what the hell goes where. There's a red wire here that's not even connected to anything. There's another red wire here that's going up under the chassis, which is going to a fuse block, which had a fuse in it. I knocked it out of it just now. I don't know where the hell it just went. But anyway, this is uh, clearly not factory either. So I'm going to have to start going through here and eliminating a lot of this stuff. Um, the regulator over here appears to be alive. And there is juice going to it. So it is connected, but not connected properly. This thing also has an alternator on it, so that regulator actually needs to come out anyway. And that's even if the alternator is working. I don't even know. 
Gonna have to trace the wires back to that too, but I think we just might start there. Let's go ahead and remove this regulator and hook it up correctly. All right, it was just two Phillips head screws holding this thing in. There's one of them. I dropped the other one. So it's down there somewhere on the floor. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, this wire, of course, is hot. So before I do anything, let's disconnect the positive. Well, you know what? That one appears to be welded on now. I don't know why, but it's stuck. We'll just take the negative off then. As long as there's no juice flowing through it, we're good. Now I can take these off. Might be kind of difficult to do with one hand, but we'll give it a shot. Here's the one. And here's the second one. And then we have the green and blue wires, which is for the uh, generator idiot light, which we will be reconnecting for the alternator idiot light. But, all right, I'm gonna have to get in here with some needle nose pliers and use two hands. Yeah, they're pretty well stuck on there. A little bit of corrosion, it seems. Yeah, it was a little bit of fight getting those off, but they're off of there. All right, we're gonna take the ground wire off of here. And because the ground, well, just goes to the ground, this wire could either just be bundled up and tied out of the way, or you could take one of the generator screws and just run it back into the chassis. And that's what I do, just to tuck it up out of the way, keep it so it's not gonna disturb anything. That'll be attached to there just like that. We'll tighten up that screw in a minute. And then this wire is the one that should be coming from the alternator, which means the alternator is not working because this regulator is not meant to backfeed voltage to the alternator. So this is a regulator. I don't even know if it's any good anymore. Based on the way they had it hooked up, it's anybody's guess, but we will try it in another project to just see what happens. But it's a proper Bosch one, that's good. Made in Germany one, it's not one of them garbage ones from China. All right, under here, we have those three power wires. There's this one, there is this one, and then there's the one that comes from the alternator. What I like to do here, and I'm gonna do the best I can to do this with one hand, and anytime I've done these, I typically take these two connectors and I just kind of slide them into each other here. See these two connectors just go like this. There you go. Now they're bundled. And then you can take the other connector here and just push it in into the end here. And you might need a pair of pliers to do this, but actually that worked out pretty well. Now you got a proper bundle, and wow, that's really, really tough. Sometimes if they're a little weak, you can crush them together with a little pair of pliers. But make sure that you either put some shrink wrap around this before you do all that, or use some electrical tape here to bundle it. The next thing you do is you take the blue and the green wires, and these also go together. This is gonna be the little thing that your alternator sends a signal to the, uh, the dummy light on the dashboard. Anyway, I'm gonna need two hands for this one. This one's fiddly. Yeah, they are pushed together. We'll get these things bundled up. I'm just gonna put some um, Gorilla Tape around it just for the minute, just so nothing touches anything. I might have to come back in here and take this stuff back apart because if none of this works, guess what? It's gonna get a generator back on this thing. <laughs> All right. Cross your fingers, everything's good. Touch this here, if we get a spark, something's wrong. Okay, no spark, good. That's good. All right, let's go in the back and see if we got any voltage at the alternator. All right, well that's corroded as all hell. I'll probably take that off and buff it with a little bit of sandpaper. But, do we have any current? Yep, okay, we're now hot. This is hooked up properly. Now I'm hoping that this wire it's connected like it's supposed to be. Because that's not the right color. Well, neither is this one for that matter. But they go into this bundle. This does like it have looks like it has the right colors in there. Okay, so somebody shortcutted something, or literally cut it short instead of shortcutted. <laughs> and uh butchered this harness. This probably is because it had an engine fire. Probably the uh, the Dodge guy, and we already wrapped on the uh, 
Chevy and the Ford guy, so this was the Dodge guy that did this crap. Here's our ignition wire. Bundled all by itself instead of where it's supposed to be. It's probably one of these two, and I believe it's usually the black wire. So we're gonna investigate that, because if that's what it's supposed to be, we're gonna put a little extension on there, maybe just even use this, reconnect the two and put them back together. White wire, ah, could be mistaken, but I think that has something to do with tail lights. I will come back to that. This carburetor doesn't have a choke on it that I'm aware of. No, it doesn't, so there's no wire that's coming out of there for that. All right, um, well, one step closer. <laughs> Okay, I went and I grabbed this coil wire and I started wiggling it and if you look down in there you can see that fuse block that I was pulling on earlier. Yep, that's connected to that wire. So that's the reason why we have no spark. That's the reason why it didn't light off and not because of fuel specifically but because there's no hookup. It's not actually hooked up. Okay, well we're gonna try to see if we can get it back into the stock wiring harness the way it's supposed to be. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewire that bullshit switch under the dashboard. Since the ignition switch, or the key, has been removed. Now, this is a rat rod, so that's okay. We're not worried about security or theft on this thing. There's ways to prevent that anyway. But, uh, yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to try to rehook this the way it's supposed to be. And get it run back where it's going to go. Alright, well... I got a little bit of work here ahead of me. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all these idiots' wires and just disconnect them. Just disconnect them and go back with the factory harness. Ah, oh, what a bullshit mess. <laughs> all right, here's these mess of wires. Just start pulling things out. Whoa, those aren't even connected to anything. I'm just going to leave that here in that little bin then. MSD distributor here. Got this wire, apparently goes to nothing. It might actually go to the headlights. This is just a friggin' mess, look at this, oh my god. And the red wire here, which also went to nothing. Look at that, all those. And then up under the dash here, we're gonna grab that three wires. The brown one, which is the ground to the headlights, which can go anywhere, it doesn't have to run back to the battery. A blue one that goes to nothing. This blue wire, which I think is the one we just disconnected. Here's the red wire. This is the one that was connected to the ignition switch. Mm. Sometimes it's just easier just to completely start over. <laughs> I don't even know what that wire goes to. Or that one. Oh my god. Maybe those go to the tail lights or something. Yep. There's a blue wire in there. That's probably what those go to. Okay. I hear Biddy calling me. Biddy needs attention. Biddy hears my voice, and I'm not giving Biddy the attention that Biddy needs. Okay, that's in. We will revisit those because that clearly won't be part of the stock harness anyway. So we'll get back to that. All right. This wire, we believe is tail light, probably on this side. That one is probably the tail light. It crosses. Okay. Well, maybe that's a brake line on this side. <laughs> this is a disaster. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay. Oh! Oh! What else did I just spy? A hard line going directly to the caliper. So as this thing steers, this hard line is flexing. Or oh, wait a minute, no it's not, it's connected to a soft line. I don't know if that's correct on here or not. I'm gonna have to come back to that too. I'm not super beetle proficient, so... Somebody out there watching this probably already knows the answer to that. All right. All these wires are just gonna come straight out to here. Get them out the way. Transmission nose cone. I don't know why the hell that's in there. Panel to something, don't know what. 
Hey, look, the sun is lighting us up. That's great. I wonder how long I'll have that for. Okay, this one is going into the fuse block. This one appears to go back into the harness. This is the black and red, which I think is the power. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's power coming back from where the regulator used to be. I thought it was black and red and white rather, but yeah, it might be this one actually. All right, well, this switch up in here, all these wires go into it. It's all gonna be done over. Oh, look at that. The switch broke it did. It just broke it did. That wasn't even what I was tugging on. I was. <laughs> all right, well, we're gonna have to um, fix that piece of shit too. Incredible. All right, mind you, I do have the battery disconnected over here. But what kind of. <laughs> this is just something that I had to share. What kind of wiring harness? Runs down the right side of a tunnel in a Volkswagen. I started pulling and I got all this. And I'm just pulling, and I'm just pulling, and I'm pulling. And all this comes out of here. I don't know what the hell that's to. This was up underneath the steering column. The color of those wires does not look familiar at all to me, nor does that connector. It's almost very trailer-like. But, you know, forgive my ignorance, but I don't know what it is. And I assure you, it's not something from a Volkswagen. The other end of it here appears to be connected to the battery. And then there's a couple more wires going to the back of the vehicle somewhere, which may not be hooked up either. No, they're not. They just pull right out. <laughs> We're connected to nothing. I have no idea what the hell this is for. Complete bullshit is what it is. All right, well, I'm gonna get a wrench and I'm gonna disconnect that. It looks like a a, uh, a breaker, which only connects to this unusual harness. So whatever it's for, it's now going away. Goodbye, junk. Well, I have no idea what this wiring harness goes to, so if anybody out there has a suggestion, maybe you guys can answer. Uh, I'm thinking maybe some kind of trailer harness, but it goes in the trash now. Recycle. Copper. Alright, the number of wires up under here that are mystery wires is getting smaller. Yeah, there's another one. <laughs> and this one, that one appears to be, well, it's actually not connected. It's just a piece of wire hooked in. There it goes. Alright, more trash. Look at that. All this removed. What's this white one now? White one goes under the junk bundle to. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Wasn't even protected. And it runs under to the headlights. Okay. Since these headlights are all custom and the stock headlight harness doesn't look like it's complete anymore. And yeah, there's actually what's left of it. See? This is the kind of stuff that needs to be capped off. Just gonna burn fuses and burn shit up. Um, this is some of the stuff that I'm going to try to reattach to, if at all possible. I'm just going to be using the newer style switches that are on here. Okay. Well, we're getting somewhere now. Okay, all that bullshit wiring was removed up under here, and then just using stock wires, I feeded them through the hole in the dash here, it's actually the radio hole, and I removed the switch panel. Let me show you something, how simple this is, using just factory wiring, without using this entire mess. Okay, we have the factory positive going into the master switch. This is the essentially the ignition switch. This will turn everything on. Right now it's hot, but we're not grounded. If I ground this to anything, the light comes on, okay? So that's simple as that. It's flashing only because it's not a good electrical connection, 
but here because somebody's gonna say something there it is it's on solid all right the other switches for the lights I've just disconnected those entirely we'll come back to that but the wiring for the starter here this is it it's as simple as just and I'm serious it's all right here just you could tap into the factory wiring why these guys made a damn mess out of this is anybody's guess. They actually made it more complicated than it needs to be. But the back side of this switch, well, it looks like it's missing something. There's components that appear to be just, just gone. Um, this here is part of the switch that it looked like it broke off earlier, but I don't think it's, well, maybe it's a little broken? It's tough to say. It looks like there's a switch or something, or a, a screw or something missing from it, but this goes here somehow, and then there's a module that goes in the middle. Now, I didn't get a good look at it first. I'm gonna have to look at some of the old videos and see what I had going on here, but chances are I'm gonna have to replace this switch anyway. This thing just looks like it's a piece of shit. So I think there's a whole mechanism that's supposed to be inside of this. It's just gone. When that switch blew apart, I guess it fell out. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can find the stuff in the trunk and if I can piece it back together. So great, if not, we're just gonna see if we can get another one of those. And I think I've seen those at just local auto parts places. So I'm gonna see if I can just pop it out of the panel and just replace it. If not, we'll just get something else similar to it and put it back together. But I think we're at a stopping point. So everybody, thanks for watching. Licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And don't forget, B is with me here, and B has been working on her Carmen gear, so make sure you check out her links also. They're up there on DuckShit.net, just the same. But I guess, um... That's going to be it for the time being, so thanks you guys for watching, thanks for bearing with me through this thing. <laughs> this thing is just an electrical disaster, but it turns out it's just a bunch of add-on garbage. It looks like the original wiring here is pretty intact, and we're just going to go with it. So, I guess we'll see what happens. So, till next time, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>